Hello and welcome to Europa Universus 4. I am Lord Forent here with a guide on how to do Yar Har a pirate's life for me. Choose to play as new providence and conquer all the Caribbean. So in order to do this, um, it's rather tricky. So first off, there are several requirements to forming new providence. Um, in this case, uh, in order to do so, you have to have privateers in the trade node having um, roughly about 25% of the trade node in the Caribbean node will trigger it. Someone also has to colonize and core the Caribbean. The easy way to do this is form a colonial nation that has the Caribbean and then boost it through using privateers and stuff. Um, also, somebody else may have to privateer as well. It's a little tricky how to actually do it in general. Uh, other ways you can do it is if you have a trade fleet go by, privateers have at least five trade power and they're not your own. Um, or country with capital in the Caribbean has at least five war exhaustion. It's a little bit tricky. But anyway, you will end up getting an event where you can switch to a pirate republic. And this is the only way to play as New Providence. You can, of course, turn down the event and uh, the New Providence will still appear, as do all the pirate republics. Um, and then you'll have to go beat them up and conquer them again. However, the way to get around this is if you go when the event fires, if you pause the playing of your game and you go to the Paradox save files for Europa and you copy and repaste that same save file there, it'll create a copy of the game and that should still have Iron Man status so you can still continue on from the game you are on. Um, for those of you who watched my Portugal Let's Play, you will notice that this is very similar to the world in which I had my Portugal game. And that is because it is. Um, if you guys remember that there was an event when New Providence fired, I said I'd go back to it and do it later. Well, it took me this long. So in order to play this country, you have to meet all those requirements. And then it's slightly tricky on how to play them. You will spawn in the Bahamas. Um, if you want to give yourself a better start at this when you want to play this country, you can develop this before the pirate event fires. Uh, if the pirate event does fire, it takes a while. The earliest it can do is, I think, 1650 or so. And uh, for me, when I started, the Bahamas was, I believe, like a 30... Mm, actually, it was probably about a 30 or so development province. And as you can see, I boosted it, boosted it considerably higher. Um, that was mainly due to your mission tree. So one of your missional tree is um, a second Madagascar, get your development to 20. It's worth doing, you get construction, some tax modifier, which is good. The next one you want to hit is a second Madag an old fort. Um, this is key because once you get this fort, you get a claim to conquer Cuba. Um, in my case, I wasn't able to because Cuba was a Portuguese colonial nation and was massive. Um, but then once you conquer Cuba, you'll get a claim on the entire Caribbean region. So the way the game wants you to do is they want you to start in Bahamas, conquer Cuba, and then from there spread out. I couldn't do that in this case. I had to improvise around that. But going over where we were where I started, um, we'll just go over the mess of missions and I'll, go, I'll tell you what happened for me. So to start, you have a pirate fleet, which you want to hit. We have to have a force limit of at least 20, which is hard to do, and five light ships of five. But it does give you more privateering efficiency and naval maintenance modifier. 30% privateer efficiency isn't too overwhelmingly amazing until you remember that there is a modifier called Golden Age of Piracy. And so long as you have at least 1% trade power, you'll get an additional 20% privateering skill which is really good. You do need light ships to privateer, um, but you should probably send some heavy ships along just to sway it in favor of the privateering ships a bit more. Um, once you get that done, you will have an event called, uh, well, you have a mission called Scourge of the Seven Seas. Uh, you have to have a flagship in order to accomplish this. This is reasonably easy to do as New Providence because they have three legendary pirate lords. Um, you'll notice one of them currently is Captain Grand Captain and Bonnie. I also had Blackbeard and a um, Dutch guy as well. Um, and each of them, when they appear, they will give you um, a heavy ship, uh, which is cool. Um, so if you do that, you build a flagship, um, you're pretty much in really good shape to actually expand. Let me just do that because it's going to bug me. There we go. Once that's done, you have another event called RB uh, Scourge of the Seven Seas. Once you're done with that, you have no purchase, no pay. Uh, have already 
army size 100% of the force limit, you'll get 5% discipline. Hold off on popping that to actually want a war. Further down that, if you keep going, you can have a rival. If you scornfully insult them, you'll also get a reputation, reduce aggressive expansion impact. Try to use that when you take tons of land. I forgot to do so, and it cost me about 20 years of gameplay. Then once you've done that, and you, if you have a rival who's a great power, you'll get a mission called the um, or an event. Oh, you, you'll complete the mission pirate event, and you'll get a modifier called No Kings. Gives you manpower, army tuition, and military power. These are pretty good. The other stuff you want to look at is you've got uh, a pirate horde, which if you do will give you tax, prestige, cavalry cost, which is good. You need 3,000 gold. It's actually not that hard to get, um, so long as you can keep raiding fleets. Even right now, with only 8 light ships, I'm getting about 14 gold for every trade fleet that passes through, and I pass through a couple times a year through the Caribbean, plus I get trade from the Caribbean. Um, in fact, trade is pretty much what's running my empire, 42 gold once I control the Caribbean. Uh, then you also have Pirate Federation, if you have an ally who's a pirate republic, you can get a mutual exchange which boosts manpower, land force limit, diplomatic reputation. A renowned buccaneer, if you have an admiral with 12 pips, really easy to do with these guys because you got legendary commanders, you get tax and morale of armies. And then the last one that's really kind of interesting is this is more for if you start off in Madagascar around the world, you get. Um, claims on that region. There's also piratical trade practices as you control more trade there. If you have privateers, you'll get light ship combat, ship trade powder, power. If you have a center of trade level two, you'll get trade efficiency, trade steering. If you have three gold producing provinces, you'll get pirate gold plus 20 global trade power. And exploiting the triangle trade will get you a bit more as well, which essentially means you just have to keep raiding. So these guys, as you can see, are all about privateering. It tends to make people absolutely hate you. The other thing you can do is just like the Knights of um, Malta at this point, and uh, Knights of Rhodes and the um, Berber Tunisian nations up there. Uh, you can also raid coasts for slaves and gold. Uh, it's really good. It does take time to pop up again, but once you do, you will get a good portion of sailors and gold, and that's pretty much how you fund your empire. It's going to massively offend everyone else around you, though. So in order to do that with impunity and not die, because everybody hates you for raiding their coasts, you have to have a strong navy. Um, this is something that the pirates can actually do pretty well. Um, oops, I didn't mean to actually click for it, um, other than to move back into port. You're not on par with the Spanish or English, but I would say in terms of naval strength, you're probably the third, if not capable of matching England and Spain with a much smaller fleet due to your ideas. So we'll go down the ideas, then we'll go down the unique government reforms, because there are quite a few for them. So for your piratical traditions, you have yearly naval tradition, which is good, because that means you'll get better admirals in your ships and, you know, restoration of sailors and everything faster. You also get a leader without upkeep, which is kind of nice, I guess. And if you finish it all, you'll get negative 25% unjustified demands, which is rather nice for this region. Unfortunately, if since you start in the New World, taking land in the New World is dirt cheap and really easy. I took over the Caribbean with, I think, 40% war score, and I took like 90% of it in one war. I owned like this little bit, and I took all these. Um, I ended up taking something like 500 development in a single war. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty useful thing, and the unjustified demands would be handy if it wasn't so cheap, but I guess it would come in handy if you try and invade Europe and Africa, which you can do reasonably well. Uh, the best thing the pirates have is religious apath apathy. It doesn't care if you have negative religious, religious tolerance, heretics, and heathens. No penalty whatsoever. These guys have no religion issues whatsoever. It is unbelievably broken. Um, I guess it goes along with the other colonial nations not having this issue, but considering this is a nation you actually want to play, um, these guys are way more tolerant than even the Ottomans with humanist ideas, which is saying something. Next one, you got Plunder, 25% looting speed. Then Buccaneers, negative 10% infantry cost. 
not overwhelmingly great. Sail in consort, though, you get global naval engagement, which is really strong. Um, Comparison-wise, you get it as a splendor idea in Age of Revolutions, so uh, it's really useful. Then you have one of their other good ones, Elected Quartermasters, plus 10% morale of navies, negative 2 national unrest. Um, this pretty much means, because you have no religious problems and you have reduced unrest that when you take over a country if you raise the autonomy once you're never going to see a rebellion from them at all uh, i didn't see rebellions in any of this conquest next idea pirate bays this is what makes the pirates so hard to defeat plus one naval combat bonus off own coast this is exactly the same as the british idea um, that makes the British Navy wooden wall, but that's a naval tradition. And then you have life of liberty, sailor recovery speed, rebel support efficiency. So all this means is you can have a reasonably small navy. Um, you don't have to worry about up uprisings, and you can defend really well. So um, for your naval doctrine, and this is important to figure out what you want to do, um, you can, depending on which country forms you, if you're lucky it's Great Britain, uh, or you form it using Great Britain or England or any of those, because then you'll get the wooden wall ability, so you get another naval doctrine, so you have plus two naval combat ability off your own lands, which there are quite a lot of owned provinces and ocean provinces in the Caribbean. Um, in my case, I, had, I did it with Portugal. Um, the naval doctrine you probably want to see select is ship boarding while fleet and being is nice to make your fleet cheap navies are not expensive overall galleys you don't want any galleys whatsoever you want to disband any you get merchant navy trade power not overwhelmingly useful because you're going to be plundering raiding and fighting and in this case portuguese marines is pretty much entirely useless because uh you can't really fight anybody head on to begin with so how do you oh and then we got government reforms before we go into how you play them so at the beginning you're going to have a locked power structure you're going to have pirate republic you can't form trade leagues you have three factions buccaneers smugglers captains you have a four-year term limit prohibit switching government type and new rulers are automatically admirals which is nice because you don't have to keep paying 50 diplo power to have an admiral um, you have also plus 50% naval force limit modifier. You have yearly one Republican tradition. Don't worry about that. That's actually easy to get around. Um, this Republic is probably the most stable of all the Republics, which is strange. You may raid coasts, including coasts of country with same religion, which is really nice because no one else in the world can raid their own religion. Um, chance to capture enemy ships plus 33%, negative 50 max absolutism. So 33% chance to capture, then you stack that with ship boarding, 33%. You've got a 66% chance of taking ships. It is absolutely ridiculous. Um, this fleet here, I started a, I had a coalition war. Um, pretty much all the Americas attacked me. I had 20, 22,000 troops. They had 250,000. But because I had a navy, I won. I started the war with 10 heavy ships. As you can see, I have 36. I disbanded half of them early on. I got rid of the 200 light ships and the over 160 transport ships as well because they were bankrupting my com country. So you'll end up with plenty of ships once you start winning. The key is to have tons of heavy ships and enough transports to ferry your tiny, tiny little army around. Kind of they play like merchant republics in Europe, which is really strange to think about, but it does make sense. And then further down the reform tree, we have Republican virtues. So you can have a council of captains, additional privateer influence, captain's influence plus 0.10. You have articles of agreement, which you'll probably want to take. You have bonus sailors. You have plus 0.5 yearly Republican tradition and plus one buccaneer's influence. This 0.5 Republican tradition, of course, partially equals out this penalty. The other one you can do is smuggler's haven, trade power abroad, smuggler's influence. Essentially, it would allow you to pull more trade from the rest of the Americas into your land and then um, obviously make money from it. And then you have frequency of elections. I did consolidation of power just because uh, the absolutism, I wanted a little potential for it. In the end, it really didn't matter because I didn't really use absolutism. Um, so it really doesn't make much difference to these guys because you'll have three legendary pilot lord choices. So you might as well just do frequent elections and just keep re-electing these same legendary leaders. 
because, and this is the broken part, they don't cost Republican tradition to be reelected because they are legendary. Um, so this person here, Anne Bonnet, I've reelected, I think, three times. And so her stats, which were like two, zero, and six, um, have obviously gotten a lot better. I can't remember the exact stats. Uh, then you have regionalism. Um, this is your standard Republican stuff here. Um, you've got provincial governments, you've got administrative districts. I did unions of state for the trade power just because there's a lot of um, money passing through the Caribbean node and you can pick up a lot of it with the trade. You could also do provincial governments because you're going to be taking lots of states and they're going to be highly autonomous. So paying the upkeep gets a little bit expensive, um, paying about five gold to maintain those. And then you've got separation of power, tier five. This is where the absolutely broken pirate idea comes in, other than the lack of religious problems. So you've got your, you can't do parliament. Uh, presidential system, reduced institution abrasive costs, don't do it. Then you've got pirate king, naval land, naval leader fire, plus one, harsh treatment costs, negative 20, captain's influence, plus 0.1. It's reasonably good. You also have black market consortium plus 0.1 smugglers influence, but it enables merchant republic mechanics so you can place trade posts places. So essentially you can do tiny little raids, steal a province, put a smugglers post there and start dragging tons of trade to the Caribbean. So that makes them a pretty good trade nation. But here's the one that makes them absolutely broken. War against the world doctrine. Tyrants of the world must be unseated. We no longer tolerate kings and despot making slaves of our fellow man. And so we shall adopt a new doctrine, war against the world. Government mechanics disallow trade good slaves. Reform modifiers, negative 15% ship building time. Years of separatism, negative 5. Combine that with the unrest. Combine that with the lack of religious problems. Most provinces are mostly pacified when you take them. And point one, buccaneers influence. And, under government mechanics, enables war against the world Casus belly. So this is essentially a early, absolutely really useful version of imperialism. Uh, I will potentially, I'll fake a declaration of war on somebody so you can see it. So it comes down way at the bottom, war against the world, negative 75 aggressive expansion, 100% proceeds, 75% cost. So it's not as particularly good as Imperialism. I believe these is may also get imperialism. I don't actually know. But uh, you can declare it against anybody for all provinces. They're really cheap. It's really quick. It's really easy. There's no need to make claims on anybody. The only reason you want claims in the Caribbean is it makes it cheaper to core them. And uh, that's pretty much it for your unique pirate stuff. I did... Uh, con um, Consolidation of power, because I was worried about stability. Turns out I didn't really need to, but an additional one diplomat isn't really worth it. Then you've got guiding principles. You have political, admin, or moral diplomatic. I went diplomatic. Doesn't really make much difference. Um, I thought I'd have more naval ideas. I ended up having a lot more admin than I expected. So... Then you have electorate. Out of these two, you have landholders and you have citizenry. I recommend you do citizenry for the morale of armies. You're never going to have a lot of manpower regardless, um, but the morale of armies, you can get some pretty high morale as this nation. In terms of office selection, you have you know your different options. I found I would have picked appointment by committee for the cheaper advisor costs, um, but bureaucratic apparatus, minimum autonomy and territories, negative 10. It's nice. It gets you 65 rather than 75, but you're not going to have tons of states to do this achievement or country in general. And then you got question of dictatorship. I recommend you either do strength and executive powers for some absolutism, Republican virtues for admin policies, and the cheaper re um, re-election costs. You can also lower the black flag, which will abolish the pirate reform and just make you a normal republic. I don't recommend you do it. Pirate form is amazing. So, um, in terms of ideas, so because they're a republic, they get plutocratic ideas. I recommend you take it. Additional to unrest, manpower recovery, morale. Really useful for a nation that's fighting a lot of people. Um, 
10% morale, then you take defensive, you get 25% morale, plus the 10 from the ideas, you can have 35% morale on this country, which is really good. I did economic because for the cheaper development, it turned out to not be amazingly useful, but the inflation reduction helps with all the gold you're stealing from um, treasure fleets, so it might be worth picking up at some point. Plus the reduced autonomy and maintenance and just the money you get, it makes it a reasonable choice. Uh, defensive, it's amazing. Just military, just take it. Admin ideas, uh, core creation cost is pretty much the reason you take this, so I recommend you do so. Uh, it also will give you a cheaper admin overall. Not really necessary past the 25% core creation cost, but it's up to you. Uh, I picked offensive ideas. You could have probably also done quality ideas. Might have been a little bit more useful, but I really needed the land force limit modifier plus the bonuses. I didn't need quantity for that. I'd much rather have better land generals and uh, discipline and stuff. But in retrospect, quality probably would have been a better one just to make my navy stronger as well. So up to you. And then I started maritime ideas, but it came too late. And the reason I don't have more government reforms is the amount of land I conquered. My autonomy is 62% um, average, so it's painful. So how to play these guys. So when you start in the Bahamas, what you hope to see is, or you can cause if you're, the human, you're setting all this up, you want to see several different nations with lands in the Caribbean. My mistake was I had Cuba owning all but like five provinces of it, which made it really tough to expand. If there had been a couple nations owning two or three provinces, you want the colonial nations, not na like Spain owning a province. You want a um, Cuba, Spanish Cuba or something in the Caribbean, and then you you can easily do that. If, you're, if you've gotten to this point, you're probably good at the game. So you use War of the World. You Because you're in the New World, their overlord colonial nation master, like Portugal, will not help them. Uh, you just over do your force limit, overdo your naval limit, land, beat them up, take their land, core it. Um, because I was Portuguese, and this was unusual, I still had holy orders available, so by all means use those to boost development in these provinces up to even higher levels than they already are and just repeat until you get large enough to take on the rest of them in my case i couldn't do that i think i took over um spanish or i think this it says mexican but i think it was spanish it could have been portuguese mexico can't remember anyway I think it was Spanish. I took it over. I gained like five provinces. Then the other pirate republic of Tortuga emerged here, and they got their independence, and uh, I vassalized them. In reality, I could have probably just allied them. They weren't that useful overall. Uh, it is important to note for this achievement, though, you actually have to own all the Caribbean yourself. There can be no um, client states, um, vassals, marches, any of that. You actually have to own it. Uh, so in retrospect, it would have been better to take them out. I was hoping they'd fight my wars and send navies, but they really don't. Take the land, it's better. There's also an event where the um, Port Royal can emerge here on Jamaica. And that's why this is so late, because I had to squash them. Because they emerged on my land just as I was about to get the achievement. They're another pirate republic, same stuff. New Providence is better though. Um, so what I did instead of trying to fight here was I actually invaded um, Brazil, um, Dutch Brazil, as you can see. There's a lot of Dutch and Flemish over here. That was because they were the smallest colonial nation I could actually outmuster. Um, suppose I could have gone off and tried to invade, um, I don't know where, California or something. Um, war against the world, took their land, conquered it. Really what I was doing was trying to get enough money to build a large fleet. Once you have a large fleet, it gets a lot easier. Um, I just kept expanding. I was hoping to get this land and put it into states to get money out of it. it turned out to be that useful. In reality, all I was doing was increasing my land force limit. I think by the time I had conquered most of this, I had 15 troops total, which tells you how rough it is. I mean, this is a lot of land to fight for 15 troops. Then I built up to about 20, conquered this area. Around that time, I declared war on Cuba. They had about 35,000 troops, and I had about 20,000. I had more ships, though, and so that 
swung the war in my favor. Also, Portugal was at war because they were a large colonial nation. Um, they shipped off their troops. Most colonial nations in Cuba, Caribbean region tend to be the most developed and richest of the colonial nations early on. So they tend to keep sending their troops off to fight their overlords war. But since the overlord won't join you, wait till their forces leave, station your fleet nearby and invade. When I attacked them, I think they had 4,000 troops because 24,000 of their troops was off fighting over here in Indonesia, helping conquer, conquer Malaya. Uh, once I did that, I took it all. Um, that was dumb, um, but I could afford to. But I managed to annoy pretty much everyone in the world, including apparently Austria and some of these other ones. Spain could have joined. Portugal almost could have. It was annoying. So uh, be careful about that because you can take a lot of land, but you will offend the people a lot faster than... It doesn't really balance out. You take more land than you'd think, and you offend more people than uh, you'd expect for the war score needed to take this land. Uh, however, you can still win that war. It's important to realize that if you've got about 30 heavy ships, you can win because you've got some really nice naval morale, really nice army tradition, plus you get that combat bonus local-wise and global naval engagement. And once you start winning battles, you'll start increasing your fleet size because you'll capture 66 or so percent of them. Um, I fought a war with the Dutch Columbia. They had like 15 heavy ships. I had eight. You'd think I'd have lost, but what I did was I just stationed my navy here, and every time their navy split up to transport, I'd come out, raid their heavy ships. I usually wouldn't win the battle, but I'd retreat before I lost anything, and I just did that over and over till they were weak enough that I beat them. Took like three, four heavy ships and just kept rolling that into more victories. It's important also to realize colonial nations like well, the United States isn't one, but Portuguese Mexico, they tend to, unless they already exist on the map, they don't build forts. So it's really strange, but uh, this whole area here has no forts except for capital forts. So all you have to do is invade, take over the capital, and most colonial nations will surrender most of their land. Uh, it's relatively easy. This is one of the Funner achievements I've done in Europa. Um, getting here takes time because you got to colonize the Caribbean, then you got to get the event. Um, just make sure you get the Bahamas. Then essentially you can pirate, you can privateer your own trade node. So just do that, and it should get you high enough. Um, or just wait as time goes on. Eventually, other nations will privateer, and uh, you will see them. And it's very obvious to switch to them. Switch. Conquer people, use war against the world, you'll do really well. The factions, for those who are interested, Buccaneers, negative tax modifier, plus sailor recovery, plus one yearly Republican tradition. Remember how I said negative Republican tradition wasn't an issue? This right here, plus the reform that gives you 0.5 a year, um, I'm gaining 1.5 right there. It's pretty awesome. So you don't really have to worry about it as long as you keep the Buccaneers in power. And as long as you're raiding coasts, they will stay in power. Smugglers are peace. They give trade efficiency, global trade power, but you lose yearly prestige. And you're going to be losing Republican tradition from that. Captains, negative plus 10 civility cost, plus 10% morale of navies, plus 1 naval leader fire. You could do this, but I didn't really find a use to use these guys to privateer by because the sailor recovery turned out to be a bigger issue than morale of navies because you do not have a deep sailor pool or a deep manpower pool. So be careful of that. Um, luckily, raiding coastlines gets you sailors, so you should all pretty much always have your fleet or part of your fleet privateering in the node. And as they privateer, if you keep an eye on the raid coast icon as they move through the Caribbean or around it. This will light up and so you can raid while staying on a mission which works really well. Plus if you're privateering you will increase the um, how do I describe this? Um, you will increase the privateer efficiency in the trade node. So even if people are sending their fleets out to hunt pirates because you're privateering you boost it higher this raid coast modifier is based off your privateering efficiency so you want to be privateering in the node when you raid the coasts if you can help it because they will be um, trying to stop pirates from spawning in the caribbean you can of course raid up to two zones away so starting in the bahamas you can raid up to 
Cape Hatters up here, but you cannot raid up in the Delaware Bay. It goes along, but as you expand, obviously your raiding range gets larger. I mean, I was raiding down here to get money from Brazil. Uh, you're not going to be able to get to Europe and raid though, unless you you know take over the Azores or something. So anyway, that is how to play New Provence, New Providence. Um, this is going to be a quasi country and achievement guide because that's pretty much what you do with them. Um, just remember your legendary leaders, you want to re-elect the same one. Then when they die, you'll get the option for the other legendary leaders. They'll all show up at once, but use one until they die and then pick the next one because they won't disappear until you elect them and then they die. Um, they also are genius level naval commanders. I mean, this is a 5361 admiral with a level-headed trait. So uh, you will annihilate navies. I mean, this is like some of the best admirals you'll ever see, and you get them for free. So have fun, enjoy New Providence, and yar har yar har a pirate's life for you. Bye for now.